Hi, this is Dave Buchanan, and welcome to the Public Safety First podcast. The podcast you're about to hear is part of our Roadmap podcast series, which provides more information about the FirstNet Authority Roadmap, our guide to the future of FirstNet. As part of this series, we're showcasing the six domains that provide the foundation for the roadmap. Today's episode dives into the situational awareness domain, which focuses on how FirstNet can be used to collect data and turn it into actionable information for first responders. In today's episode, FirstNet Authority Senior Public Safety Advisor David Cook speaks with Matt Sloan, CEO and co-founder of Skyfire Consulting. Their discussion highlights the ways drones are increasingly being used by public safety to enhance response and situational awareness. Thanks for listening. So my name is David Cook. I am a Senior Public Safety Advisor for the First Responder Network Authority and I'm speaking with the owner-operator of Skyfire Consultations. Yep. Um, Matt, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, absolutely. So I got my start actually in EMS uh, early on in my career. Um, Then I transitioned into, uh, I was actually a medical news journalist uh, for about 14 years, and then I started playing around with drones and and realized like, wow, this really has a lot of application for for what I did in public safety, and got really excited about that, and uh, started working with public safety agencies around the country to help them start uh, safe and legal drone programs. And uh, we've now worked with close to 200 agencies coast to coast. Uh, and, and we're really seeing this industry just change completely in, in front of our eyes. It's very exciting. I understand that your company provided some services during the Super Bowl. What did you do? We did, yeah. So we had two, uh, two tethered drone aircraft on top of two buildings here in Atlanta. Um, and uh, over the course of four days, we provided uh, aerial surveillance uh, for all of the different uh, public safety agencies, local, state, and federal. Um, and we were on, on tethers, so basically we were in the same spot for, for those four days. But what we were able to do is look at uh, ingress and egress points. We were able to look at, you know, when there were fights going on, we could zoom in and see what was going on. Uh, when they had ambulances come in, we could kind of follow them through the crowds. And uh, we, it was the first time uh, drones had ever been used uh, in a big tier one event. Uh, in the U.S., and it was very successful. Everybody that was on the receiving end, it was about uh, 12 different agencies were watching the feed, uh, which we ran through FirstNet, uh, and, and uh, it was very successful. Why did you run them through FirstNet? Uh, because uh, we realized that we wouldn't have had coverage any other way, uh, because you know I, I tried to use my regular non-FirstNet cell phone, couldn't even make a phone call, but when we started streaming video, uh, we knew we were going to need a significant amount of bandwidth. So. We went to our partners at uh, the State Emergency Management Agency, and uh, they gave us some FirstNet sims to use for uh, for that event. So, for four days, we were using that connectivity to uh, use the, the streaming software that we that we uh, used for the event. Did you take into consideration security of that data? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we actually had a, a dual layer of security because all of the the security that's built in through the FirstNet network, and then the software we use has you know layers of, of encryption that meet FBI standards and things like that. So it was important to me because. There were several hundred thousand people here, and so making sure that the data only got to the people who needed it was uh, was obviously important to us, but also more importantly to our partners. So at the Super Bowl, you assisted with uh, situational awareness. Mm-hmm. How else do you think a drone could uh, provide an incident commander with some situational awareness input? Yeah, well, situational awareness is the name of the game all across the board, no matter what type of incident you're talking about. So whether that be on a fire scene and you need to know where the hotspots are, um, you might not be able to get a uh, crew around the back of the house to see if there's a giant propane tank back there. So you can put an aircraft in the air, um, look for the hazards that you're about to walk into. Um, same thing on the law enforcement end of things. You know, what, what are my guys about to, to go into? We can fly a drone through a building and find out who's, you know, who's inside. Uh, we can read placards on a, you know, an overturned truck or trailer before we put somebody in a level A suit. But uh, the name of the game is safety, right? So we're, we're trying to make it safer for first responders where they don't have to put their lives in danger. Same reason that a, a, a bomb squad would use a robot. This is exactly that that as well. Um, we, we, I'd rather have a machine go in and, and risk its life, so to speak, before I put a person in there to do it. I was told that there's a fire department that uses drones to search the desert, and if they find their victim, they drop them a bottle of water mm-hmm. and a telephone. Is that a realistic? Oh, yeah, absolutely. The, the only rule right now that we have to kind of stick within in that context is line of sight. So as long as I can see the drone from where I'm operating it, um, I can carry something with it. I can drop something with it. Um, we frequently will drop life jackets from drones, uh, radios, cell phones, water bottles. Um, another use case I've recently seen is that uh, we had a SWAT team put a tourniquet on the drone in case somebody got a cut and they, they were pinned and they couldn't get out. You could actually fly a medical kit to them. So 
really the drone is just a, a vehicle for anything you want to put on it, whether it's a camera or a payload or anything like that. What kind of advancements in technology have you seen in the drone industry in the past few years, and where do you think it's going in the near future? It's unbelievable. Now we've got high-end thermal cameras, uh, we've got zoom cameras, we've got optical gas imagers, things like that. Um, I think that you know we're going to see new imaging payloads come out, um, and I think that'll be happening very soon. Um, the other big advancements I think are going to be on the software end. Um, you know, the drones, the batteries are sort of at the limit of where they're going to be. Um, the cameras are really good. I'm sure they'll get better, but they're already really good. Um, what's really interesting to me is what do you do with all this data when you get it? Um, and, you know, can I run it through an artificial intelligence engine and will that help me understand what the scenario is? Um, will that help me predict where the wildfire is going to go next? Um, so things like that, I think, are really going to be where the huge advancements come in the next couple of years. Would you say that drone technology uh, is something that a modern incident commander should be considering when they're designing new trucks? And Absolutely, without a doubt. I mean, this is, you know, I, I've been accused of using this uh, phrase in a hyperbolic manner, but I really think this is the best tool we've gotten since the fire hose. And I really mean it. It sounds crazy. But when you think about the way we've been fighting fires for all these years, you pull up on a scene and you just look at what's in front of you. You have no other information other than what you can see with your eyes. So now, you know, you start to put a drone up in the air, you can start to get a 360 view immediately. Then you put a thermal camera on there. Now you've got even more data. You put an optical gas imager or a hazmat detector. The, the amount of information you can get from one small platform is it's, it's through the roof. It's, it's unbelievable. And so, yeah, I think if you're not considering it, you, you should be, and you probably will be in the next year or two. And what role will FirstNet play in drone technology? So I think the importance of FirstNet is the fact that, you know, I talked about data as sort of the new currency in the drone world. Um, we're going to be moving a lot of data. It's not just going to be video, right? We're going to be running things through uh, artificial intelligence processing engines and streaming video, and, and we're going to be remotely piloting the aircraft over uh, data networks. And so the idea of having a dedicated bandwidth, dedicated network where we can use these data sources back and forth without having to worry about um, you know, also sharing the same bandwidth with the public I think is critical. The security of that data is critical. Um, and having a common, uh, a common system that all public safety can you know, interoperate on uh, so I think I mean, FirstNet is going to be a, a major factor in, in how this industry grows, for sure. This is David Cook speaking live from the International Association of Fire Chiefs in Atlanta, Georgia. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome. <laughs> Absolutely. Pleasure to be here. Thanks for listening today. We're excited to have you join our podcast community. Make sure to subscribe on iTunes, SoundCloud, and YouTube. You can learn more about the First Responder Network Authority at FirstNet.gov and learn about FirstNet products and services at FirstNet.com.